spread. Hey y'all. Happy Black History Month, first and foremost. Welcome back to the vlog. I am Alexia Nicole. I'm living my life by design. It's February 1st and we're shooting content. Yes, we are. <laughs> Carrying over really from July, but this is some good fun content, y'all. Doing something fun for Black History Month. So if you aren't, by the time y'all see this, Black History Month probably gonna be over. But go back to my Instagram, follow me over there. You get to see a lot more things like as they're happening rather than on my YouTube page. But Nick is ready for me to talk, so. Yep, sure. Welcome to Independence Heights, a community built on a foundation of faith and historical past. A Greater Heights subdivision located just outside the inner loop. It's the first black city in Texas that was incorporated in 1908 with a population of 600 residents. Offering its own financing and allowing people with low income to become homeowners. By 1930, it was annexed by the city of Houston. Today, the neighborhood is home to some 14,000 residents of diverse backgrounds. It gives residents easy access to major Houston hubs like downtown, the museum district, the Galleria, and much more. All around are investments in the neighborhoods and infrastructure is occurring. The community is expected to grow and new homes are under construction. With the median home price being $321,000, Independence Heights offers some of the more affordable homes in this area. If you want Independence Heights to be your new home, contact me today at alexianicole.com. Hey y'all, so it's a little day off-ish and I ran into a subscriber, Robin. <laughs> She said, is you Alexia? That's okay, I'm about to be doing that too. Yes, I am. So um, she just watched November part one and just told me I need to post part two. So let me do that right now. Ooh, they're waiting on all the tea. That's a red. We rooting for y'all. We rooting for you, baby. And they watch the vlog. Oh, see? So they'll see, see? I pray. Prayers. All right, y'all. Say bye. Say bye, Robin. Top of the morning, good Wednesday, February 9th. This should be the start of a new week of um, House Hunters Houston because we're changing it up, y'all. Remember, no more long monthly. I'm trying to break it down either weekly or bi-weekly. So just work with me as we get into this new groove. <laughs> um, but let's see, what am I doing? Right now, I am on my way to meet Sharon Isaac. Um, remember, hopefully the last vlog, we, um, we saw them picking out, we went to the design center, they picked all their structural designs, um, and all their finishes, so now we are actually going back to the community, to the lot that they picked, and we're meeting with the actual builder, so not the sales guy, not the design people, not the design people, but the, um, whoever the build, and every time, this always confuses me, but whoever the um, builder man is over this community, right? So the builder itself is Perry Homes, but then of course they have people that are designated builders for a certain, ooh, the sun is sunny for the community. So anyway, we're going out to meet with the builder over the community and just talk details of the home, go over the structural design and whatever else. So headed to do that, y'all can't even see me. All right, son. So we're gonna go do that today, um, this morning, 7.55 in the morning. It starts at eight o'clock. I'm like, well, it's early, but you know, that's fine. Um, and then also later on today, what will I be? Today is, um, I'm doing a lot of content this month and last month. So if you follow me on Instagram, well, actually I posted it on YouTube too, so you may be seeing them on there as well. Um, they're YouTube shorts, not videos, but just like the little shorts and the little whatever, like reels or whatever. Um, for the month of February, I decided that I wanted to highlight um, black history in Houston. Why is it taking me this way? You know what I just remembered? When we first went to this community, the Google Maps took me somewhere else, but I know where I'm actually going, so I don't need it. I always use GPS, um, although I know these roads. You know, just so they can give you like updates on traffic and if you need to go like, you know, a little optional route or whatever. But that's about to have me all the way messed up. Anyways, um, so yeah, so for Black History Month, 
I've decided to highlight um, historically black communities in Houston, which has honestly been teaching me so much just about, um, I was gonna say my little city, but ain't nothing little about Houston, um, the greater Houston metropolitan area, not just the city of Houston, right? But um, yeah, I mean, it's just like, they ain't teach us this in school, you know, like you learn US history, but you don't actually learn like your state history and things like that, not that I remember, I don't know. But anyways, I've been learning quite a bit. So I've been making um, videos about them. So I picked four historically black communities in Houston. It might end up being five because it's a toss up between two of them. And I'm like, well, I might as well just do a little bonus one. Um, I post them every Monday in February. So I posted the first one um, Monday. Now today I'm gonna be recording the second one. Um, and it's just 60 seconds and it's really hard because there's so much that I wanna like fit in, but I'm just like 60 seconds. You know, I can make them longer clearly, but you know, Instagram and their algorithms and they want people to be making reels and reels can only be 60 seconds and you know, all of that stuff. <clears throat> so if you're interested in any of that, uh, just let me know. Anyways, y'all, my phone is ringing, gotta go. Right. Correct, yeah. TV. yeah. That makes sense. So, okay. Yeah. So, we're going to come here, and it's going to stack right here. Okay. okay. So, all three doors open to one side, or those two doors open. Well, they, yeah, they stack into one. They stack into one. So, it's kind of like an accordion style? Yeah. Okay, got it. And like, I'm gonna check on your got to the lot. Foundation will be poured next week, Thursday. Vlog. Wow, oh, they're so sweet. Alright. Okay, uh, you gotta do live photo. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Y'all hiring? I need another job. <laughs> All right. Me and Nick just finished shooting. Um, episode two, ins installation two, whatever. But look at this closet, y'all. These are the things I dream of. And this is like standard closet. All of this space, like, I got all the space. So all I would have to do in here, like I wouldn't even have to turn. This is literally the size of a bedroom, honestly. All I would have to do is take these shelves and these Rex down and just put my built-ins in. And look, they already have built-ins over here for like handbags and shit. Baby. All right. We borrowed the house for what we needed. Now it is 4.15. I've got to go because I have a um, Zoom consultation. All right, y'all. Done shooting for the day. It took a little longer than I thought. I had a Zoom call that was supposed to be starting now. And it really needed to be via video Zoom because of, I was going to... <clears throat> Somebody that I onboarded last week, Taryn, um, she got her pre-approval done, which is always awesome. Um, but she's wanting to stay at a price point that is a tough price point. So <clears throat> anytime somebody tells me, you know, that they want to be in a certain price point that I know is like what I like to call a a <laughs> struggle price point <laughs> competitive price point well not even really competitive because <clears throat> i mean it is competitive but you can still even get up to five six hundred thousand things still be competitive but this price point you know like that low 200s price point is a struggle price point because you just don't find a lot of things on the market that are like moving ready and and nice <clears throat> so the plan was to um, just have a Zoom meeting and do a little shared screen and just show her how I do my searches and what comes available and just really break down what that price point entails. So she's in the mindset and ready to house shop and she knows what you know she can um, afford at that price point. Um, or if she wanted to reevaluate, you know, like I respect everybody. If you only want to spend fifteen sixteen hundred dollars a month for your mortgage okay but I'm gonna show you this this is where this is where we're at with that price <clears throat> so anyways I'm going to um, 
I rescheduled her for this Saturday because um, five o'clock Houston traffic. I just I thought I was gonna be done by three and I would have had two hours to get back home. Um, but we weren't. We didn't finish till like four fifteen. And then <clears throat> what else is going on? Um, I just checked my emails. Had a whole bunch of emails. Antonio, who at the end of November um, went under contract on his his um, inventory home that was still being built. Um, originally, they said that we were going to hopefully have a close date by the end of January. And then we did not. And then they were like, okay, end of February. So literally just yesterday, they <clears throat> emailed us with a close date of February 22nd. Which I'm like, okay, great. Because me, of course, me, I'm just chilling, waiting. There's not much for me to do when, you know, it's new construction inventory. Just We're just waiting for it to be built. His lender um, has been emailing almost every week. Like, okay, do we have an update? Do we have an update? And I'm like, we ain't got an update yet. You know, like, I will let you know as soon as I have a date for you. So, send him the email yesterday, or I guess two days ago. Maybe it was yesterday of the updated close date so he's waiting for Antonio to send him his um, uh, insurance information his home insurance whatever you know whatever home insurance that he purchased they need proof of that and then um, they're waiting for the appraisal to be done because they had sent out an appraiser when we first went under contract which I don't know why they did that because I told them at that time the house wasn't complete so yesterday, um, the builder told me, the sales guy said that the home was ready for inspections, which means appraisal can be redone. <clears throat> so they ordered the guy, they ordered for the appraiser to go back out. He went back out today, get an email saying that the house still isn't ready to be inspected. It's missing carpet and appliances and then so on and so on, which appliances, like sometimes those are really hit or miss. So they're just going to have to get over that part of it. Um, but you know, you need the carpet. It doesn't have any sod, which I don't know why he's, maybe they it just saw it as in grass, S-O-D. Um, so I'm assuming he's talking about front yard side because backyard side, I don't know if he gets backyard side in this builder. Um, but you know, just an email saying that it's not ready. So I just sent a, I just, it, it wasn't, it wasn't, I was going to say I just sent a nice, nasty email. It really wasn't nice, nasty. It was nice. It was just very forward. You know, like, I built a, a good, pretty good relationship with the sales guy, Bailey. He's a nice guy. Um, but I just forwarded him the email from the lender. Like, look, bro, this is the third time that appraiser has went out there. <clears throat> or, no, this will, will be, like, we have to send him back out for a third time. And every time you do that, that literally charges Antonio a fee. You know, hopefully the lender's taking care of it. Somebody going to have to eat that fee. But it's like, dang, like, come on. <clears throat> You're telling us one thing. you wasting people's time. So, hopefully all of this, hopefully the home will really be done and ready to close um, by the 22nd. So, that's in, like, two Tuesdays from now. Today's the night that we're supposed to be closing on his house on the 22nd. So, we'll see. <clears throat> it's always down to the nitty-gritty with this real estate stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like man why does everything have to be down to the final minute but that's what it is good saturday morning saturday february 12th um i have three calls this morning well two this morning one this afternoon um this one i am just following up with a buyer that has received her pre-approvals um and we're going to talk about the price point that she wants to be in and what that's going to be able to afford her it's 10 30 right now our meeting is at 10 30. so let me log on to zoom good, good morning, morning madam. how are you I am doing well. How are you doing? I'm good. Just trying to get this lazy Saturday feeling out of my system. Right. Yeah. But no, it's like, because I tell people all the time, I'm like, 
You're letting your realtor become like your, your best friends during this process. And it's really important to build like a comfortable relationship. Expect, I mean, with both, but especially with your lender because they're all in your money. You know, like you want to you want to be able to have that rapport with them. That's why I always suggest like reach out to a few. They may give you the same pre-approval, but, you know, just building that relationship really does matter. <laughs> and when people say don't get emotional, I was like, oh, I'm emotional already. And I'm not even in a rush. Yeah. Uh, but I can just see how, um, well, 175, 200, 225, 250, like there are major, like it's a clear difference between Because I was looking at some yesterday and some still have no HOA and they have a low tax rate. So it doesn't make yep. it too bad. You know, it still can put you like right about 23, 25, but that's just still a lot of money if that's not what you're willing to pay. Yeah, you know? that's exactly, yeah, I don't want to do that by myself. Yeah, mm -hmm. trust me, I struggle with that every time I'm like, how long are we, <laughs> we going to be at this by ourselves status? <laughs> I, I can see where people stay with one another, even if they don't like each other. Exactly. It's like the meme where people are like, I you know, it. I'm just getting married so we can split these bills. I feel that wholeheartedly now. right now. When, when you said you're in your email, I think you said like 14, 15 is what you really wanted to be. 17 at the most. 17 at the most. So that definitely means we're going to have to stay... Um, yeah, about 225, 230. I'm not saying that it's not possible. I know, I know, I know exactly what you're saying. Now that I see, um, I do understand more of like what I'm up to. Um, at that price point, you have to move fast. Unless it's new construction and we what? can get in, oh you have God. to, like, I can't emphasize enough how fast you have to move. You have to be ready to say, there's no, oh, let me sleep on it for 48 hours. You know, we're, we're still in the seller's market and people are out here buying houses. Yes, and that's exactly All right, y'all. So that call went good. Just um, wanted to make sure that we were on the same page of what she's going to be looking for in a home. Um, you know, just making sure that my clients, buyer clients, understand where the market currently is and what they can afford in their price point. Um, we ended it with her telling me about a subdivision that she drove by that um, is coming soon with a new phase. So I called them, got, had us added to the interest list. They should be opening up hopefully next month. Maybe we can get her under contract on a new construction that they'll have coming up. Her goal date is to be moved in by June. But I'm um, just going to try to get her under contract by next month on something, whether it's maybe not even necessarily next month. But if it's new construction, the earlier the better. And then resale, you know, we're just going to fight that good resale fight. Um, it's 11.17 now. I have another call at 12.30. Um, and this is going to be a first time chat with this potentially new client she was referred to me by actually I know her we went to college together but her best friend is currently um under contract with me the one that we did the design center and stuff for so she's now ready to make a move so this the year as far as just like closings and stuff for me has been off to like a slower start uh but this summer is looking to be a good one. Anyways, y'all, I'm gonna um I'm gonna actually start editing a vlog for y'all so I can hopefully get that posted. Welcome to Fourth Ward, also known as Freedmantown, one of Houston's most important African American historical communities. Fourth Ward emerges one of Houston's most prominent African American neighborhoods when thousands of freed slaves flooded into the city after emancipation. 1,000 freed slaves selected this site on the southern edge of Buffalo Bayou. Since it was inexpensive and white Americans did not want to live here because it was swampy and prone to flooding. Fourth Ward citizens paved the streets with bricks they made by hand and built a neighborhood physically and culturally. Fourth Ward's decline began in 1937 when eminent domain laws allowed the city of Houston to condemn and take black owned properties. The construction of I-45 eliminated many of the ward's most important buildings and destroyed the geographical integrity of the community. By 1980, the only residential area left in Old Fourth Ward 
had become the poorest black city in Houston with just 4,400 residents, which was a decline from 1920s to 85,000 residents. Today, despite gentrification, the community has had a cultural resurgence, affirming the spirit of its self-reliance in its early inhabitants. Situated between Montrose and downtown, you'll find home prices starting at $125,000 to $1.2 million. If you're looking to make Fourth Ward your new home, contact me today at alexianicole.com.